am I uh, am I still on mute? I do a lot of talking. I seem to spend most of my working day these days on video calls. And to be honest, even when I was in the office, I still really enjoyed going around and talking to all my colleagues and finding out what was going on. Then there's the talking I do on these videos. Quite formal, but still relaxed. Then there are the big set piece presentations that I do, preaching at church or talking to large groups at work. Then there are the quick video calls or phone calls that we have. And then there is the conversation that I have with my family and friends where many things can be left unsaid and we all know the in-jokes and the family history references. So, what sort of conversations should we be having with God? Our passage today, Matthew chapter 6 verses 1 to 18, includes one model of how we should talk to God what's become known as the Lord's Prayer. Although, of course, Jesus never needed to use this prayer, not least because he never needed to ask for his sins or his debts to be forgiven. But the rest of this passage that we're looking at today is also about how we are to behave when we are giving our time and our attention to our Father God in heaven. Giving, praying and fasting. Three things that Jesus' Jewish readers and hearers would have known all about. Three things that followers of Jesus were expected to do as renewed people, as citizens of the kingdom of heaven, and as part of the deal that we've been looking at so far in this series. But three things that Jesus says must also be renewed, like we've already seen renewed justice and renewed morality. And the whole of this charge from Jesus for these three areas of our lives, can really be summed up in that first verse of chapter 6. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. In this part of the sermon, Jesus challenged us to think not just about what we do, but how and why we do it. Just like we saw with morality earlier, God isn't looking at the outward actions that we do. He's looking at what goes on in the heart, not what people see in public, but what happens in private. Take giving. Do you give to show off? Do you give to make yourself feel good? Do you give so that everyone knows about it? Now, I do have to be careful here because I work for a charity and I would love people to give to a charity without really worrying too much about what the motivations are. If everyone else has to hear about how generous they've been when they give to those affected by breast cancer, well, that's fine with me. But Jesus says in this passage, when it comes to being citizens of God's kingdom, like our theme for the whole series says, do not be like them. That is not the way that we should behave. We give because we are thankful for all that God gives us. We give as part of our worship to our generous God, not because we have to, not because we need to pay our entry fees into the kingdom, and not because we want to get anything in return. Although verse 1 and verse 4 do make clear that because we have a generous God, we will see reward for the giving that we do. And then there's fasting. Fasting isn't really something that we teach much about, is it? It's not something that forms what we do together at St James, not, to be honest, something that I do very much myself. But this passage does group these three things together, praying, giving and fasting. And we can't ignore the fact that this passage says when you fast, not if you fast. Fasting is going without something and instead devoting the time, the energy, the money, maybe your mental or physical focus on God and not on the thing that you are leaving behind. But it mustn't be a ritual, a rule. It mustn't become a rite that you follow. It has to be something as a response to our love for our Father, and it has to be done in private. Fasting strengthens self-discipline. It loosens the ties to the material things that otherwise might rule over our lives. And it allows us to follow God without distraction, for that time that we are leaving behind the thing that we are fasting for. 
and then there is prayer. Isn't it amazing how simple and normal Jesus makes prayer sound in this passage? It doesn't need formality or long words or long-windedness. Just imagine if my conversations with my family at the dinner table were carried out in the same way that I might talk to a hundred people in church on a Sunday morning, or I might talk to a big crowd of people at work. It would be very odd to have a conversation like that with my family, and likewise, it would be very odd to have a conversation like that with God. Our prayers to our Father in heaven should be as natural as me talking to my own earthly dad. When we pray, Jesus says that we shouldn't try and impress the people around us, but also that we shouldn't try and impress God. We shouldn't babble thinking that God will hear us if we go on longer. But also we shouldn't be timid in our prayers. We should ask for what we need, such as for our daily bread. And that message of, of asking for what we need and expecting God to answer, that's built on uh, a little bit later in the Sermon on the Mount, in chapter 7, verses 7 to 12. So do go away and have a look at that later. But there are some things that we must do when we pray. We must make them our prayers and we must make sure that they're private prayers in the sense that the only audience that matters for our prayers is God. Now, that's not saying that we shouldn't pray together. And that doesn't mean that we can't use prayers that other people have written. But we can't delegate the job of praying to someone else. And we shouldn't show off if we are honoured to be able to pray on behalf of others. We pray together to support each other as we pray. Even if our prayers might be articulated out loud by others who are speaking. And we thank God for the gifts of those who can write fantastic prayers in words that we would love to be able to use and expressing thoughts that we are desperate to express ourselves. But our prayers have to be between us and God and we shouldn't get puffed up with praise if we are able to pray on behalf of others and we should definitely not judge others for how they pray. And then we must approach God with thankful and forgiving hearts. Jesus says this in, in the prayer that he teaches his disciples in verse 12 but then he expands on this in verses 14 and 15. Let's listen to those now. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. He will not forgive your sins. That's a really hard phrase. Is God being petulant here? Well, if you're not going to play nicely, then I'm going to take my ball away. No, no, not, not at all. Far from it. The fact is, if we still nurse grievances, when we are still bitter, then that means we have not fully repented of our own sin. Forgiveness from God requires true repentance from us. So, if you want to be citizens of the kingdom, then when you pray, do not be like them. Do not be like the hypocrites, the religious ones who think they know God, who want to impress him. Or do not be like the pagans who don't know God at all and whose devotion is completely misplaced. We do know God, but we must come to him the right way and we must renew the way that we talk to our Father God in heaven. Now, there is so much more here to look at. I've only briefly skimmed the surface of the topic of prayer, but we have been looking at prayer uh, through the great prayer course that we've been doing in our life groups and I know our youngsters are still looking at this course at the moment. So I'm not going to say any more about this now and if you haven't had a chance to see those videos and do that course then do drop Laura a line. They're all online on the web and she can let you have the contact details and the link to take you to those fantastic videos. I urge you to go and have a look at that course. Now we're going to finish chapter 6 next time, so do have a look at the rest of that yourselves before we get to the next video. But for now, think about these things that we are called to do, to give, to fast, to pray. Where do those actions need to be renewed in your lives? Where is God challenging you today?